Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Back in 2020, when the M1 Mac Mini released, I was so curious about the performance that I had to buy one to find out for myself what it was all about. And being a hardcore PC guy, I, like everyone else, was super skeptical about Apple making their own chips for desktop computers. And to be honest, I bought it with a bit of a motive. I was gonna prove that Apple Silicon was bad and I wanted to use it for a video and then I thought that I was probably going to sell it. But what I didn't anticipate was the more that I used it, the more that I fell in love with it. I soon realized how wrong I was about Apple Silicon. So much so that it's become my main computer for doing almost everything other than gaming and editing. It became my always on and ready to go productivity computer that was just there and did what I needed to do. I even went as far as saying that when Apple refreshed the Mac Mini with a faster chip that it would be an instant buy for me because my base model M1 Mac Mini, although it's fast, it just wasn't fast enough for the other things that I wanted to do without firing up my editing PC. Don't get me wrong, I love my base model M1 Mac Mini. It just didn't do a few things that I wanted to do with the eight gigs of RAM and the 256 gigs of storage. And that there with those two specs alone was a bit of a limitation for what I actually want my daily computer to do. Which brings us into 2023. Apple announced the brand new M2 and M2 Pro powered Mac minis. So I committed that cardinal sin of any PC person out there I pre-ordered a base model M2 Pro Mac Mini with 10 gigabit ethernet and it actually arrived a few weeks earlier than it should have. And that's actually the reason why this video exists because I actually had time to use it. The main thing to remember here with the Mac Mini that I've got, it's got 10 gigabit ethernet and I'll explain that a little bit later on in the video. The reasons for the M2 Pro chip were easy reasons over the M2. The M2 Pro has four Thunderbolt ports and the M2 Pro has HDMI 2.1. The non-Pro has two Thunderbolt ports, uh, which I kind of hated about my M1 Mac Mini, and it only has HDMI 2.0. And as far as the rest of the specs of the configuration, as mentioned, this is the base model M2 Pro Mac Mini. It's got 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD storage, which turns out to be that it's actually more than enough for what I need. Uh, let's get the biggest thing out of the way first. We usually do this at the end of the video, but I wanted to talk about the price from the jump. In Australia, the base model M2 Pro Mac is going for around $1,999, and in the US, it's going for around $1,299 US dollars. As configured with the 10 gig adapter in mine, in Australia, mine's going for around $2,149, or in the US, it's around about $1,399 US dollars. While we're talking about the price, Apple actually lowered the price on the base model Mac mini by $100 Aussie dollars and around $100 US dollars. That is almost unheard of when it comes to Apple. Since when does Apple drop prices on anything? I mean, it's gotta be a good sign, right? Unlike a lot of the other videos you may have seen about these M2 Mac minis, I've actually been using this to see if this is something I can recommend to people who need a computer that can do computer things not a gaming computer, which it can do, but regular computer related tasks. Sometimes it doesn't need to be super technical. Videos like this just have to make sense. And I just wanted to add as well, like I received this about three weeks earlier than I should have because I ordered the 10 gig version and for some reason it shipped faster. Anyway, as I said, been daily driving this for about a week and spoiler alert, I love this computer. Uh, I've been using it to do almost everything on on a daily basis which doesn't include gaming, but this video is really from a PC user's perspective about usability and not for gaming. Although, as you're about to find out, it's better than you expect. But let's take a quick look at the M2 Pro Mac Mini. It's actually the same size as the M1 Mac Mini and the Intel Mac Mini. It's about 19.7 centimeters square with a height of 3.6 centimeters. This one weighs about 1.3 kilos which is slightly heavier than the M1 Mac Mini. On the rear, there's a power button, there's a figure eight power connector. This one's got 10 gigabit ethernet as configured, but usually it's only gigabit ethernet. It's got four USB type C slash Thunderbolt four ports, an HDMI 2.1 port, two USB type A ports and a headphone jack. It supports up to three displays using a combination of USB type C ports and the HDMI port 
to go up to around 6K 60 Hertz. I personally use two USB Type-C to DisplayPort adapters and I picked those up off Amazon for like 15 bucks. It's also got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 for that wireless connectivity built in. Let's jump into some of the benchmarks. I didn't do a heap of benchmarks here. I just thought it was relevant to share some of these results with you guys. So here's Cinebench R23 with the multi-core speed. As you can see, it sits right in the middle of all the results here. And this is about what we'd expect from the CPU. It's a 10 core CPU with six performance cores and four efficiency cores. For single core speed though, it is very, very fast. In fact, it is quite a bit faster than the Apple Silicon M1 chip. And it's coming in just above the Ryzen 5 5600X. So pretty impressive results here for an ARM CPU. Now onto some gaming benchmarks. I just thought this was interesting to share because I did test this and the performance here is a lot better than we saw with the M1 results. I don't have those results because they're irrelevant now, so and I didn't have time to rerun the test, but this is just to show you what it's like with Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p high. If we take a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p high, 40 frames per second is respectable. It's a bit more towards the cinematic spectrum, but it is playable at 40 frames per second, so not a bad result here overall. And lastly, onto Puget Bench for Premiere Pro. The score here for Premiere Pro with Puget Bench isn't too bad. It's not as good as what we'd see with, let's say, an i5 or a Ryzen 5, but the reality is it will get better with time, and I think this is going to be just about bang on for most people. Now, I didn't test Resolve because I don't use it, so that result there isn't relevant to me personally. I did want to know what it was like for Puget Bench, so... Those are the benchmarks so far. We do have more content with this machine coming very soon. Benchmarks aside, the user experience is amazing. Although Mac OS doesn't have things like window snapping. I use an app for that. I'll talk about that in another video. The more I use the current versions of Mac OS though, the less I hate it. That new system settings app though, what were they thinking? Look at this thing. It's abysmal. Why is it like that? Just, no. Anyway, as far as support for Adobe Creative Cloud applications, everything has an Apple Silicon version now, as opposed to when I first did my M1 review, Photoshop and Lightroom run perfectly. Premiere Pro runs pretty well. In fact, I'm editing this video on the new M2 Pro Mac Mini, which is no issue at all. And that's also down to the fact that we shoot everything in Blackmagic Raw, so, I mean, that codec runs like a dream on a potato. I still render everything on my editing PC because it's just faster for now. What I didn't expect though was the render times in After Effects for the graphs that we use in videos is just, it's ridiculously faster on the M2 Pro. And I think I'll be using the M2 Pro Mac Mini for all of my After Effects renders from now on because it just saves me time. I actually can't believe it's faster, it's weird. From a PC user's perspective, because that's what I am, I daily drive a Threadripper Pro machine for editing and that can render a whole video like this one in about four or five minutes. It takes a lot longer on the M2 Pro Mac Mini, but the overall experience of editing is good. And this kind of leads me into why I got 10 gigabit ethernet on my machine here. First of all, all of our network is 10 gigabit ethernet, so it just makes sense. The other thing is, although the base price on these Macs is actually not terrible, the cost for extra storage is beyond a joke. I'm sorry guys, but an extra like 300 Aussie dollars for another 512 gigs of storage to bump it up to a terabyte is not worth 300 Australian dollars. Imagine if you decided to go for the eight terabyte version, which is more of the cost of the Mac mini by almost twofold, right? That's insane, but I'm getting off track. The reason is our entire network is 10 gig and our network storage is also 10 gig and we've got half a petabyte of super fast network storage. So why on earth would I pay for extra storage when I can pay 150 bucks for the fast ethernet adapter and essentially have unlimited expanded storage with the only real limitation being how many spinning disks sitting in my closet. And that makes more sense to me. Not only that, not having to think about the speed and the time it's going to move stuff across the network also makes 10 gigabit for me personally a no-brainer. Why wouldn't I do that? 
The M2 and M2 Pro Mac Mini refresh is the refresh I think everyone's been waiting for. This, ladies and gents, is what Apple Silicon is all about. This is the true power of ARM. It's no longer a hobbyist architecture or something that you're used to seeing in your phone. It's a properly legitimate powerhouse for desktop computing. These new Mac Minis quite literally change everything that you thought you knew about Macs. This is the best version of an Apple computer that we've ever seen. And I would even go as far as saying that the Mac Studio is kind of pointless because these Mac Minis are just that fast. Other than you wanting heaps of RAM, these will do just fine. I'm a complete Apple Silicon convert and I'm the biggest skeptic out. Believe me, I never like anything. <laughs> this whole channel is built on quite literally building PCs, but with computers like this, it's hard to hate on the M2 Pro Mac Mini. The other thing about these new Mac Minis is that they're for someone who wants to buy a computer, they wanna plug their monitor and keyboard into and just use. It's very simple. It's not overly complicated, it just works. And you won't catch me using an iPhone though. They're pretty terrible devices if I'm being honest. The iPad Pro though, that is a cool device. If the M2 Pro Mac Mini is any indication of what's to come, and I said this about the M1 stuff, bring it on, but bring it on faster. I wanna see an Apple Silicon Mac Pro because to be honest, I don't care how much that thing's gonna cost, I'm probably gonna buy it. It's one of those moments where you feel like this is the first time you're using a computer because it's just that different, but at the same time it's familiar and it's comforting and you know that this relatively cheap computer is gonna do almost everything that you throw at it, except for gaming, for now. I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you guys now, Apple is gonna make a fast GPU and it will play games, just not right now. Is that a prediction? Yeah, 100% that's a prediction. Apple will make fast enough gaming GPUs. It's just gonna happen. When they did their whole keynote with, the, with this new Mac stuff, they showed it like playing games like No Man's Sky and stuff like that, so I feel like it's just gonna be yeah, they're gonna do it. They've already been hinting at it. Yeah, no, I'm asking because it sounded like you were saying it's a fact, not it's a little prediction. No, it's a fact. <laughs> it is a fact, they're gonna do it. There's far too much to talk about with these new Apple Silicon Macs. The truth is, there is way more than I can cover in a single video. So if you wanna see more content with the M2 Pro Mac Mini, drop a comment down below. There's just not enough time for me to do that in a single video. Otherwise the video would just go for too long and you'd hate me. But let us know what you think about these new Apple Silicon Macs. I think they're pretty interesting and I'll say it now, when these get to the eventual refresh that they're gonna have with the faster CPU, it's gonna be another instant purchase for me. It's hard for me to say this, but right now, the M2 Pro Mac Mini is probably the Best value for money, new computer you can buy right now, and it's not a PC. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's insane for me to admit that, but there's just no denying that Apple Silicon is impressive in almost every single way. So Apple, good work. It's very hard for me to say that, but this thing absolutely rips. I love it. It's, it's an awesome computer. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. If you didn't like this video, tell us what you didn't like about it. I guess that's something you can do, right? Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seeking. I, I love the M2 Pro Mac Mini. It is such a cool little computer. It is so much better than the M1 that it's not funny, especially for my use case. Look, I've got the M1 here still. Obviously, I'm just about to shoot B-roll with it and whatnot. I love this thing, and I, I don't even know if I want to sell it, just because I could probably use it for some other cool little Linux project. But, man, the M2 Pro, what a ripper of a computer. If you can afford it and you need it, absolutely buy it. Thanks for watching.